In the spotlight tonight, I am deeply sorry. Those words were written by Alan Chambers on the website of Exodus International, the world's largest pray the gay away church. Chambers continues, I am sorry that some of you spent years working through the shame and guilt you felt when your attractions didn't change. I am profoundly sorry that many have walked away from their faith and that some have chosen to end their lives. I hope the changes we announce tonight regarding Exodus International will bring resolution and show that I am serious in both my regret and my offer of friendship. That night, at the 38th annual Exodus Freedom Conference, Chambers announced the unanimous decision of the Exodus International Board of Directors. Exodus International to shut down 37-year-old ministry for those with same-sex attraction marks its last national conference. Exodus International had more than 200 branches throughout the U.S. and Canada. Joining me now, MSNBC's Steve Kornacki and Joy Reid. Steve, this is a fairly incredible thing that happened. Yeah, and it's, you know, I wasn't necessarily following Exodus day-to-day, week-to-week, so it kind of came out of nowhere for me. I mean, maybe this is something that was part of a, a dialogue that was a long time coming, but I mean, that name, Exodus International, I think is sort of an iconic name in that kind of line of work in that field, whatever you want to call it. Reprehensible line of work of reparative therapy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but it's Speaks to, it really speaks to sort of the trajectory of history. 37-year-old group, you're going back to the mid-1970s, and you just think about where sort of the conversation, where the politics of, of, of sort of gay rights were in the mid-1970s. It was a total, complete fringe thing. Um, and, and here we are, in less than 40 years, we've gotten to a point where, where an organization like that that was once, in, in a lot of ways, sort of mainstream, um, literally has to shut down. You know, Joy, we talk about changing attitude, attitudes towards uh, gay marriage and, and just sexual mores, and we look at those numbers nationally, usually. But if you look at just young evangelicals, 44% of white evangelical millennials favor allowing gay and lesbian people to marry compared to only 12% of evangelical seniors and 19% of evangelicals overall. I mean, this is where the future is in terms of the evangelical movement. It is embracing gay marriage. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that this is a very interesting sort of case study in the futility of fighting modernity. And (laughs) And it's sort of an object lesson for the bigger, you know, evangelical Christian and Christian movement in the United States. I mean, the reality is churches are emptying uh, the ones that aren't as modern and you're not seeing as many young people gravitating into these churches and whether you're talking about you know very strict Catholicism or really strict evangelical evangelical churches they're trying to find new ways to appeal to families to appeal to younger people to stay alive and they're finding as you just quoted in those statistics that younger people are more modern on this issue of gays and lesbians and they've got to either come to them or watch them walk away uh, Steve you are known in this building is Mr. New Jersey. And so I must ask you a question relating to that moniker. And Jerry Brown, governor of California, became the first U.S. governor to sign uh, legislation that bans conversion therapy. Uh, There are some holdups in terms of implementation, but a similar bill is making its way through the New Jersey legislature. And we know that Chris Christie has had a semi-fraught relationship with the subject of uh, conversion therapy. He said, generally, philosophically, on bills that restrict parents' abilities to make decisions on how to care for their children, I'm generally a skeptic of those bills. Now, there can always be exception to those rules, and this bill may be one of them. Do you, What do you think he has to do on this? Yeah, I mean, my expectation is, I, I would, if I had to bet on it, I'd bet he's going to end up signing it. Um, it's a really interesting test, though, isn't it? I mean, if you look at sort of the politics of this, um, the immediate politics of it are great for Christie. He's running for re-election in a blue state in 2013, so obviously it helps him to sign this. It would hurt him not to sign this, but the broader politics that everybody's talking about with Christie are 2016, and, and, and sort of the storyline there is, you know, h- how far can he sort of break with with what is today conservative orthodoxy and still be a viable contender in 2016. And I'm really interested to see, you know, he, gay marriage has come up in New Jersey, too, and Christie's way of sort of punting the issue has been to say, well, he, you know, I, I'm for traditional marriage, but what I'm really for is a statewide referendum. I want the people to decide. And there's all sorts of issues like should, should right, you know, should like marriage rights be put to a, an up or down majority vote like that. But that is actually, that, that actually polls pretty well in New Jersey. So he's managed to sort of finesse the issue of gay marriage in New Jersey that way. This one you can't really finesse. So this one you have to make a decision on. And if he does make a decision to sign this bill, it will be interesting to see if there are national Republicans who, who make him pay a price even for that. It'd be a test of where the Republican Party, if they've, if they've moved on this at all. Well, yeah, I mean, once again, it's the test, the ultimate test. <laughs>
<laughs> so the Republican Party, Joy, yeah. between the moderates and people who are trying to, you know, modernize the party and the the rump of ham-fisted polls, as Politico calls them, <laughs> that have Shanghai the, the party in the 19th, some say 18th, could be the 20th century. Yeah, and, and it's just, it is this rage against the dying of the light kind of thing you're seeing with the Republican Party. And look, Chris Christie is testing the proposition that you can rebuke one the one of the three legged three legs to the stools of the Republican Party, which is the Tea Party part, where he doesn't go whole hog on that. He's willing to embrace uh, President Obama when he's giving money to New Jersey. He's willing to, as he says, put his state first ahead of necessarily uh, party politics. Uh, you can't re- reject the Wall Street part of the party, right? Obviously, you can't reject that part. But the third <laughs> part, and probably the biggest part, is the evangelical movement, the evangelical right. part of their party. Could Chris Christie possibly rebuke two out of the three legs of the stool of the Republican Party and still be viable in 2016? I find it very hard to believe, but I guess we may uh, test the proposition. If you can play whack-a-mole with the president on the boardwalk, <laughs> surely you can embrace gay marriage. Anyway, we have to leave it there. Steve Kornacki and Joy Reid, thank you both for your time sure. tonight.